All right, this is Mr. Frank Murray again. This is the looking at the hot stuff worksheet. So if you think you're hot stuff, this is the worksheet for you. All right, so um, if you're cool like me, then you don't need to worry about it so much. All right, uh, anyhow, the first part is pretty straightforward, fill in the blank, uh, so forth, things like that. Uh, number 14, uh, they've given you four temperatures there, and you need to say if it is correctly written, and if it is physically possible, then you would say yes, it is correct. If it is either not possible to have that temperature or it is not written correctly, then you would say it is incorrect. Okay, uh, just keep in mind some things. Uh, if you remember, Kelvin uh, does not use degree signs. Kelvin cannot go below zero. Uh, zero degree or zero Kelvin is the same as negative 273 degrees Celsius, and that is absolute zero, so you cannot go below that. Uh, there is no limit, on the other hand, on how high the temperatures can go. So, uh, keeping that in mind, uh, just write down if any of those are, uh, if each one of those is a correctly written and a correctly possible uh, temperature, or if it is not, and therefore incorrect. All right. Uh, on the back, once again, just kind of some thought questions again, until you get down to about number 18. Okay, number 18, you have to use the formulas right above there to convert, and you'll use those for 18, 19, and 20, those three uh, things there. So, for example, if we're going to do one, uh, let's say that it was um, 79 degrees today. Okay, uh, let's just say it was 79 degrees. It was probably actually a little hotter than that, and that is Fahrenheit. Now, if I want to know what that would be in Celsius, okay, I would look up at the top. And the first one says you're going from Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. That's what we want to do. And it says the degrees Celsius is equal to the degrees Fahrenheit, which is 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Minus 32. That's the difference between zero, which is freezing in Celsius, and 32, which is freezing in Fahrenheit. And then you need to divide that by... 1.8 because Celsius degrees are uh, twice as big, almost twice as big as Fahrenheit. And if you calculate that, someone calculate on their calculator and see what you get. You can hit pause now if you don't want to spoil a spoiler alert. Okay, uh, but if you have done it, you will realize it will get 26.11111111111111. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we would just need two sig digs. That's what we had up here. So we would just take that 26 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's how you would convert that. Now, say, for example, you were reading the thermometer inside the room, and it said it's 23 degrees Celsius. And you thought, well, what is that? Okay, how can I change that to uh, Fahrenheit, which is a temperature I'm more comfortable using with, right? So we would say to go from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit, we would want to use, uh, it says the degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 1.8 times the degree Celsius, which in this case is 23 degrees Celsius, so times, and um, this time you're going to, sorry, add 32 to that answer. So basically you're kind of doing the opposite. Before you subtracted 32, now you're going to add it, and you're going to do it at the end, and before you divide by 1.8, now you're going to multiply 1.8, but you do that first, okay? So it's just kind of the reverse of the other one, and if you do that, the correct answer is, spoiler alert, here it's coming, all right, that is 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes sense because 23 is a little less than 26, and it's, uh, I mean, it's about 3 degrees less, and it's about 6 degrees less than 79 was over there. So that probably indicates we did that correctly. And that's how you would do those type of problems, okay, for 18, 19, and 20. Uh, on 22, uh, you are going to have to use um, the Q formula. All right. Uh, now, you will notice that on number 21, there is... Uh, you have uh, 10 kilograms of aluminum, which tells you the specific heat, it tells you how much the temperature change, and it wants to know how much thermal energy. So for number 21, first of all, you're solving for Q. That's what you're trying to find. And notice it gives you a little hint there in parentheses. Mass units need to be the same. Uh, if you'll notice, the specific heat is joules over grams times degrees Celsius. 
So probably the easiest way to do it is to change 10.0 kilograms to grams. And would that be bigger or smaller? I want kilograms to cancel, so it goes on bottom. And we're going to get grams on top. Kilograms is bigger. There's in one kilogram there are how many grams? 1,000. So if you just multiply 10 times 1,000, that will give you the number of grams. And then you're ready to plug into the Q formula. All right. Now, number 22 is similar. You're going to use the Q formula, but it tells you the joules of energy, which would be Q, 5,775 uh, 5, joules. Okay, and this time you're going to solve the Q formula, which, just for the record, is Q equals mass times final temperature minus initial temperature times the specific heat. But this time you're going to solve for the specific heat. So on 22, you're going to plug in all the other numbers and solve for that. Now there's a bonus and if you get on the internet then you can look up that and try to find out what metal you think that is once you calculate the specific heat. What would be the most likely metal for that to be? All right now number 23 is the last one. It's once again kind of the hardest ones like the last ones tend to be. Uh, it talks about a glass prism that's put into a water sample at room temperature and it heats up the water. Now it wants to know how what was TI, the initial temperature of the glass. But kind of like number four on the specific heat problems that we did, it's going to have to do two steps. First, you're going to have to find Q for the water. Okay. And just for the record, the specific heat of water is 4.18. Uh, we're just going to say 4.18. I think we'll leave it at that. Okay. And so you'll need that for that one. Uh, so that's the Q for the water. And then um, once you get Q, you're going to use the same Q for the glass, but remember Q for the water is equal to negative Q for the glass. So basically, uh, if, if the amount of heat gained by the water would just say 300 joules, that's not it by the way, then you would put negative 300 joules for the glass's Q. Okay, so Q for the glass is just going to be negative Q for the water. Okay, all right. So like I said, that one's kind of a bonus, but I do want you to try it. And then the last one is a conversion that I would like for you to actually convert on your own. Don't look that one up on the internet. Okay, uh, anyhow, that's about it for that question. Obviously, if you have any other questions, you can always uh, send me an email. Uh, but otherwise, happy uh, problem solving and... Well, I'll see you sometime. I don't know how to say see you soon, but we'll, we'll just have to see about that. All right.